Hi there, this is Udi Dahan, here to talk to you about service-oriented composition, focusing specifically on how we can take a loosely coupled, highly autonomous service-oriented architecture, both on the client side and on the server side, and still avoid creating lots of chatty calls between the client and the server. Let's take a look. In this diagram, what we have is a couple of components on the client side that we want to interact with each other in a loosely coupled manner, yet each of these client side components may require data from the server side and we'd like to optimize the number of physical calls that end up going from the client to the server and back again, all the while maintaining as much autonomy as possible. So in this case I'm going to start with say having our component from service A raising an event using this type of slightly more intelligent client-side JavaScript library, which does some fairly standard callback type of stuff that you'd expect out of any JavaScript library. The more interesting piece is when a given component that is subscribed to one of these events wants to access its server-side component in order to get some more data. Instead of just doing a regular AJAX call, what it would do is use this wrapper library where instead of um, just expecting the data to come right back, it registers a callback for when that data is to be returned. And this client-side library, the ITOps client JavaScript library, holds that requested call in memory because it's aware of this larger context of an event raise being processed. So it knows that now is a good time to buffer that request. And then the same thing happens with all of the other uh, callbacks for that original event. Each of them dis get dispatched one at a time. Each of those components, if they go and request data from their server, provides a callback function to be invoked when that data arrives. The client-side ITOps library keeps on buffering all of these requests in memory until it sees that, yes, it has completed the original context of the event, or it could be any other action on the client side. It could be a, a button click event or, or something of that nature. And sees that, okay, everything that may have wanted to request something from the server probably has contacted it by now. And then it can know that now is a good time to actually send an invocation to the physical server. Now on the server side, similarly, we have an ITOps server side library, which unpacks all of these logically independent requests made by each of the different services, in this case, service B and service C, and one at a time invokes them, where each of these server side components then, say, accesses a data store of some sort and returns back a result. In this case, what's going to happen is just like we, as we saw with the requests, each of the responses gets collected and buffered back. And only when all of the responses have been received is a single physical response sent back to the original client, at which point in time, the client-side library unpacks all of those responses and starts dispatching the data that it gets back to each of the client-side components that requested it. So here we see that service B and service C get their callbacks. Now, as far as the developers that are writing the code, uh, either on the client or the server, a lot of this is totally transparent to them. From what they know, they're just using some sort of wrapper library to make the calls to the server. And when they make the request, as far as they know, the request is being sent right away. And on the server side, developers that are writing that code assume that when they return a response, that that response is being returned to the client right away. So there is no real change in terms of how developers that are writing their type of either client or server side logic do their work. All of it remains the same. We just need this little bit of generic uh, packing and unpacking code around it to allow us to maintain the minimum amount of physical calls between physical client and physical server, while still supporting us having lots of small components in a service-oriented architecture, or if you prefer the term, a microservices architecture. And in this manner, we can have client-side composition and server-side composition where we see services 
existing on both environments. I hope this has given you a better idea of how this type of service-oriented architecture can work without really requiring any type of overhead on your physical client-server communication. This is Udi Dahan, and I hope you've enjoyed this short video.